So alternate, uh, we got the option, so we're going to go ahead and have first ban, first pick in blue side. So uh, and uh, we, you know, Navi, Navi has a very long like esports history. They've been around for a while, but you know the LOL team is relatively new. Mm -hmm. But you know in alternate, you know they've uh, they played in Hanover. They've been around for a little while, but you know Navi's been uh, they've been pretty impressive lately. Yeah, no, they have. I mean, you know, while the team is fairly new in the grand scheme of things, when you compare with you know more established teams like SK Gaming or you know CLG or whatnot, yeah. um, you know all the players obviously have been around for quite some time, and they've they've had a really impressive string of victories recently. Uh, they you know won the uh, solo mid invitational or Euro, or I guess it was that wasn't an invitational, just a Euro uh, tournament. Um, you know, so that was a good and you know really impressive win over TSM there. Uh, I remember in particular. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know their full history of wins, but I, I know that I've seen a few matches with them recently where they've just looked unstoppable. So um, it should be a lot of fun. Alternate. You know, a, a lot of these players have been around for quite some time. I know alternate in general has always been a really strong team. I just don't know. Um, you know, the best specifics about them. So we do have our bands coming out. Urgot's been a very popular band. Morgana's been popular. Ari and Janna have been popular as well. Karthus, you know, he's a very popular uh, EU band. We don't see him banned a lot in the NA. And uh, we've been seeing uh, we've been seeing a little bit of Twisted Fate uh, recently. Actually, it been you know a pretty pretty solid mid. The ultimate allows him to be quite mobile, and uh, he's been he's been causing a, a, a lot of ruckus. He's a lot of fun to play. I think that's why people play him. They're like, oh, you know, I just want to enjoy myself. I'll play some TF. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding. But he, he does give you great map control early. He, he does. He's actually underrated in team fights. So generally speaking, when you look at Twisted Fate, you think, okay, well, they're, they're going to be weaker in fights. And as a result, they have stronger ganking and, you know, map control and whatnot. But when, you, when it comes down to fights, they're going to be weaker. But he still has really strong poke. He's got, as long as he can keep his positioning, he has, you know, the strong stun. The only issue is that his range um, is a little bit lacking in the lack of you know, uh, an AOE disable or uh, a lot of AOE burst damage kind of hurts him. So he's, he's a poke kind of champion. And if you can engage on him, then very quickly he'll go down. But regardless, um, he is a pretty strong champion in competitive play. We see alternate picking up Soraka. So uh, she's definitely, you know, been seeing more and more play. I mean, she's, she's always been kind of played, but now it, it really seems when you have these tanky teams and you have, you know, late game carries like Jax, you pair him with Soraka, and now all of a sudden your team is absolutely unstoppable. So we see on the other side Navi picking up uh, Jax and Nautilus, and that's they're one of the few Euro teams I've been seeing play a lot of Nautilus. They uh, played Nautilus um, in the solo mid invitational, and he's just such a strong jungler overall. Um, you know, always a lot of fun, and his late games can be really dominant. Yeah, Nautilus. I mean, just the CC coming in from jungle is just. It's just a beast, and if you get if you can find a lane that's pushed out a little bit too far, you got the hook, you got the root, you got everything you need. And he's not, you know, he does. Uh, he's not the fastest jungler in the world, but he's pretty decent speed, and uh, it takes uh, it takes a lot to take him down. And just you know, all that all that CC, man, it can spell absolute doom. And Jack's top lane has also been uh, quite popular uh, recently as well. People have just been uh, starting to figure him out a little bit more, you know, since the rework, he's got all, he's capable of quite a large deal of burst, get something to get a training force on him is a done deal, and we're and part, actually grabbing the Orianna. Part of the issue with Jax is that his late game is just so strong, and his laning is very strong as well, so, um, you know, there's not really a whole lot of champions who can shut down Jax in lane. He is kind of weak in the early levels, so there are a couple of champions that, you know, will try and get an early advantage, and yeah. can uh, run with it very well. However, if you play Jax right, um, around starting around like level six or seven, against in most lane matchups, he actually starts winning very easily. And against a lot of laners, he can just absolutely shut them out of lane or get kills repeatedly. So he does snowball very quickly, which is a danger. Um, you know, Orianna and Graze is a really nice AOE combo. It's just the the concern right now is how tanky Navi's team is and how much fight control they have. But we'll have to see how they. Um, adjust for that because it's definitely going to give them a nice early game advantage. Navi though picking up Caitlyn and uh, Leona which is really interesting. So now Leona kind of works with the rest of the team. Okay Kog'Maw makes a little more sense. I was going to say yeah. Caitlyn we <laughs> haven't seen in quite some time and Caitlyn she can be very aggressive in lane. She you know can shut down a lot of laners but you usually don't pair her in a kill lane um, you know like Caitlyn or like Leona so uh, that would be kind of interesting but she does fall off Kog'Maw, on the other hand, now we have three upfront tanks. 
we have two super carries, and this is a very similar comp that we've been seeing a lot of play uh, recently. You have all these upfront tanks to kind of protect Kogma. Leona and Nautilus obviously have a, no a number of disables, so he will be fine in the back line. And then you also have to divert your attention. You're like, oh, do I focus down Kogma because he's destroying us, or do I focus down Jax because he's destroying us? And it, it makes it very difficult in the team fights. Yep, and uh, they've also left their last pick open for their AP mid, so you got to figure out, all right, who are we going to use to uh, lane against Orianna? Maybe they may go for like a, some, a little bit more of a, a utility base based uh, mid scene they already have their damage in Jackson and Kogma for these team fights so we'll see we're thinking about uh, Udir and we also got Shen here for uh, alternate as well a very nice late Shen pick I enjoy that pick you know, because you see a lot of teams they pick Shen early get counter picked hard never realize like oh we got to do a nice little change up here so we got to we got to reconsider our option they usually force them into jungle but it looks like this time that will not be the case and so now we got to think we got to think of a mid we got to think of a mid for Navi here who'd fit uh, I think Kennen is probably their number one pick right now. I mean, just such a strong mid all around. There are a couple of choices that they could make. Um, you know, someone with a lot of burst uh, obviously would be very nice. You know, they could go for a, a Gragas or, or actually a Rise would be a really nice pick, actually, with this team. Um, the only issue with Rise, you know, Rise would give them a uh, super late game. Ziggs is interesting. I, I, You know, you don't see a lot of Ziggs, but he does control the lane very well. He can yeah. stall the game by pushing uh, lanes very easily. Um, and then, you know, zoning. He provides even more zoning for both Jax and for Kog'Maw. So Kog is going to be very safe in this game. Um, you know, they have a, a nice chunk of a, uh, magic damage burst, so it's very interesting. Uh, Shen, I hope that's not going into the jungle. Ooh, um, I was about be. to say that you know we just saw <laughs> we just saw Wicked versus Jax recently uh, as Shen, and he did shut down the Jax almost completely, and you know just really fantastic play by Wicked. And I think generally the Shen versus Jax matchup top is very even. Um, it can go either way. Shen obviously has a massive early game advantage, and if he can you know parlay that advantage into uh, the mid game, then he can you know start controlling that lane, shut down Jax's farm. But Jax, you know, obviously once he gets going, has the potential to just kill anyone. Uh, yeah. So they are actually running a jungle Shen. So um, this is kind of interesting. I, I would tend to prefer a you know faster jungler, particularly against Nautilus, because you, Nautilus is uh, vulnerable to counter jungling. So if they decided to go with a Munda or something, the only concern is you know obviously map control. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I, I'll have to reevaluate Shen because we see him played all the time, and he always does poorly. And I'm always looking at him like, why are you playing him? He does have really nice ganks. He does uh, have his ultimate for counter ganks. So you know they know that Navi's going to be very aggressive with that Nautilus pick. Well, as a result, we can just have Shen, you know, teleport over, and you know, no big deal. You don't have to worry about the fact that when Shen is top lane and you're teleporting, you're leaving your lane vulnerable. Uh, but even so, he is going to be a slower jungle than Nautilus and not as strong of a ganker as Nautilus. So yeah. right off the bat, um, they're at a disadvantage there. And also, we've seen uh, we've seen the Jax-Udir match top lane before. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's, it's we see a lot of Udir players, they're trying things like, oh man, Jax, he's got a lot of burst. I bet I can outburst him. And up until Jax hits 6, that is to an extent true. But after 6, Jax just starts you know pretty much taking a huge commanding lead of the lane, and I'm not quite sure if, you know, I I, I, I honestly, I really thought it was going to be Udyr jungle Shen, uh, Shen top, because I mean, Shen at least, you know, he can trade, you know, pretty well with Jax, he can sustain a little bit better in lane, and he's just trying to try and reduce the lane to a farm mm -hmm. lane, but now you know, with Udyr top, like, it's... If Udyr does, I mean, Udyr can work very well against Jax and can shut down Jax, I think Udyr is also a very even lane against Jax. Mm. Um, we saw the other day, you know, like you said, Jax... Uh, completely destroying an Udyr, but I, I still think that's an even lane because, you know, Udyr, um, he can use the shield in order to block some of that burst damage from Jax, which is the big concern early. And then, you know, obviously Tiger Stance, um, you can, you know, really shut down melee characters early. The only concern is if Jax gets off to a good start, then all of a sudden Jax would be in complete control of that lane. And that's the right. case with most lanes that Jax is in. Um, you have to, you know, be very safe from the beginning and take control early. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm still I still have preferred Shen top, but yeah, yeah. it's eight B. We still we'll see, and uh, I'm also uh, I'm also looking at the the mid matchup here because I do I do like the Ziggs pick. Yes, because Oriana she's got quite a bit of range with her abilities, so we need someone who can actually stay reasonably far back and still farm from a distance. Mm -hmm. Plus, they's all, they've also got a lot of CC on uh, Navi. We got Leona, we got Jax, we got Nautilus. So for an AP mid like. With, with this kind of team comp, you just want pure, absolute damage. Yeah, and 
the big thing is, like you said, that Oriana pick. And Oriana is a very aggressive laner. Um, she can beat you know a number of champions in lane. Uh, she has her auto attack harass is very nice. She has decent range on her auto attack. Her Q is sh kind of short range in uh, fights. However, it is you know decent range in lane for harass. So she can harass down a number of people. Uh, Ziggs, you know, his counter harass is obviously very strong as well. So it will be pretty even there. Um, it will allow him to farm, and Ziggs can generally farm very safely. Now I understand you know the point of this Shen pick is likely to match up with Oriana and um, one of the things with Oriana is you know her abilities are very strong but it can be difficult to land them she doesn't have quite the range you would like for her Q in order for initiation. However, you can throw the shield onto Shen, and then Shen can dash in. You know, you throw off the Oriana ultimate. Very quickly, you have an advantage there. Um, you know, so I understand that is a very nice matchup. That's why you see Oriana kind of commonly paired with champions like Malphite um, and Shen in order to get that uh, initiation. So, you know, if they get the really strong initiation, they have decent bursts with Graves. The only concern is that they have Soraka, and so Soraka doesn't really add a lot to their burst damage. Um, you know, it does give more survivability, obviously, and Soraka is generally a very strong champion. Soraka Graves will be a strong bot lane. Mm. However, if they can't kill Na'Vi with their burst, then Na'Vi wins the longer team fights. They have, you know, really great carries that have uh, great sustain damage, whereas alternate, they have a lot more burst. So if... If alternate can't take people down in their AoE with that, you know, um, Oriana graves combo, then very quickly they could kind of fall behind in these fights. And we'll, we'll have to see how that kind of uh, works out for them. But um, I know I think a lot of it's going to come down to that top lane and what happens in the jungle. And right now, yep. Cotton X is just, you know, at a huge advantage as Nautilus. Uh, and, you know, top lane should be pretty even. But if Jack snowballs, he snowballs hard. Oh, we actually got uh, Nautilus now coming out a little bit too far. Cotton X, he sees all of Alternate right now. He's He knows they're running. They've got to get away. They know Alternate is looking to go ahead and take that blue away from them. We got the Ori Orb in the bush just for a little bit of vision, just so we have a little idea where they are. They're going to back off. They did place the ward in here by the blue to know when Nautilus is doing it. They can come on in and just go for the kill. I'm a little bit surprised. That's fine. I'm a little bit surprised that the uh, Udir didn't level his stun and you know stun Nautilus right there. They probably wouldn't have gotten the kill, but they would have gotten a significant amount of damage on him, forced um, forced him back so that they could take you know more aggressive position in their blue. While Nautilus has to recall, maybe they burn a flash from Nautilus. That would have been really nice. Uh, but you you do see they do have you know nice awareness of where he is right now. He is coming down for his blue, um, so you know it's not really affecting his jungle at all. And that ward. <laughs> It's nice to have that ward there, but it really doesn't accomplish anything. So yeah. um, I'm a little bit surprised, you know, by that play right now. It's it's almost just a waste of a ward. Oh, uh, actually, I think we it's may... so, it's going to be so hard to. I mean, as long as yeah. Nautilus doesn't fail, um, they should be able to get it. Oh, well, that's actually pretty nice. Getting some nice harass against uh, Navi before you know even coming into lane. But there's no chance for Oriana to seal this blue, particularly now that they know she's there. She's going to back yeah. off. Um, really not a concern. She has a slight experience advantage over uh, Ziggs, but it's really only one creep, so it's in completely insignificant. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just more there just for the information, just for the timing, just to see, you know, oh, did they stay, did they leave, just to have a little bit of... I think it was more there to, you know, just to check, see maybe if Nautilus didn't just change up his game plan and decide to go red first, because maybe yeah, they would have gotten true. something there. They could have gone for the gank over the red instead. Just like, you know, just what information can we get? What, what do we have here? That's true, and it does let them know that, you know, Udir is safe right now. He doesn't have to worry about the level 2 Nautilus gank coming up, um, which would be, you know, extremely aggressive. So, you know, he is safe from that regards. Um, you know, we'll have to see how he's kind of laning against Jax. He should be able to shut out Jax early on, and, you know, if he can get an early advantage, that'll definitely be nice, but there's obviously uh, going to be a point probably around, you know, level 5 almost, where Jax can start trading damage with him, um, and then, you know, we'll have to see whether or not the lane starts to swap. Yep. And we see uh, guys are putting uh, putting up the little ward there in the river just to make sure, you know, if Nautilus is in the area, they know about it. We do have uh, Cotton X J did just finish the red, and now we're going to come up top lane for an attempt here onto Cliff as Udir. And alternate, in the meantime, they're pushing down bot lane pretty hard. They want to get their aggression on, but here we go. Can we have an attempt? Can we actually get something here on Cliff? We're just waiting. We're just biding our time. Waiting in the bush. Yeah, and one thing that you see is uh, alternate, they have a huge wave pushing up top. So oh, yeah. Udir, it's not going to push back to his tower. He's definitely in a poor position here. So Nautilus is just waiting. Once Udir steps out and goes for a minion, 
that's when he's going to pop in. And Udir is scared right now. He recognizes that there's a huge ganking opportunity, mm -hmm. and uh, he doesn't want to allow it to happen, obviously, because any snowball for Jax can just completely shut him down. Now we see Cotton X have, has to leave that lane. Udir yep. still doesn't know. Um, and so, unfortunately, his lane is really far pushed up, but he can maybe be more, more aggressive now, expecting that you know Nautilus isn't just going to wait around forever. Yeah, Cotton X was waiting there, waiting for an opportunity, just did not come. It looks like just, you know, Cliff was a little bit uh a little bit conscious of where he of the situation he was. I was like, okay, I'm pushing. This is like I'm I'm absolute bait here if I stay here. Might as well just go ahead, leave, and uh we're actually, we're still pushing the lane pretty decently up top lane. But we now see Cotton X now wandering, considering doing something in the mid. But uh Citizen is pushing a little bit further than he'd like to, because uh F forty got a nice little shield of minions here to protect from that hook. Yeah, now here's the concern. Oh, we oh, have the hook on the Pharrell and Ord. Uh, There's going to be some nice damage. Wow, they might actually get this. The flash in from Citizen going to try and pick it up and very close. Yes, wow. he does get the first blood. I, I swear I thought that was going to hit the, yeah, uh, the edge. Wall. I really thought it was going to hit that edge, but like just there, like just like threading the needle right there through to get the pull we needed onto F Ward. Yeah, and I, I was just um, about to say, the, one of the concerns for alternate right now is this bot lane matchup. And, you know, Graves can be aggressive. He can push Cog into the tower, which is primarily what they're going to do right now. However, Cog has such a range advantage. Um, Graves, you know, has nice burst damage, but not the same kind of sustained damage that Cog has. And so the Soraka heal, they will be very safe with, you know, the Graves passive and Soraka. But actually, we see Nautilus coming up once vision. again. Here we had vision this time. You know, Cliff was able to get down that ward. So definitely, you know, a nice decision there. Yep. Uh, but it's it's going to be difficult in my mind to shut down Cog's farm. And, um, you know, as Cog gets some levels, once Cog is around like level six, five or six, uh, then very quickly he should be able to harass down Graves in that lane. Yeah, no, it's, even with the Soraka. Yeah, so I think uh, Cotton X may just want to, uh, you know, ignore Top for a little while. It's like we've been up here twice. We haven't gotten the opportunities we wanted to. We might want to go consider consider ganking bottom, and we do have award coverage down here as well. So it's going to be a little bit tough, but you know, not not impossible. But you know, bot and top warding pretty effectively for the moment. But uh, hey, we have, we still had the gank on mid. We still had the kills, the first blood for Navi. So we'll see how that goes from here. And we see that uh, Citizen is six. F Ward is not, so we do have a little bit uh, XP uh, lead over there as well. Trojus is here; he's waiting in that bot bush, waiting for an, his opportunity. But uh, alternate, they're they're pushing a little bit too far. But actually, here Nautilus is in town, but they don't hear the Shens here. Now they do. We got the taunt going in, forcing the heal. Now we got Nautilus here focusing down on fish. We got uh, Antigen trying to get away. He was focused on pretty well, but the Zig's bomb will not get there in time to pick up any kills. But they're still hurting. Bot lane for Navi is still hurting. Yeah, so, you know, now with the Soraka, they can take advantage of that regen. Uh, being able to get Cog and Leona both low, uh, Graves can be a little bit more aggressive in that lane. The red buff just wearing off for, you know, both um, yeah. Nautilus and Shen. That definitely could have added a little bit more to that gank. But uh, generally speaking, I would say both lanes are safe. But, uh, I mean, if you can be aggressive against Leona, Leona definitely... Um, doesn't have the same survivability as other uh, bot lane champions. She doesn't really have great disengage uh, potential. Uh, the only thing is they just don't have a really gr a great kill lane. Like they just don't have enough damage output to take down Leona unless Leona is fully committing into a jungle gank. We got uh, we got a lot of pings over here by Dragon Area. So Navi, they do have a ward over there right now, uh, possibly anticipating a uh, an attempt once they get the once they get a little bit of an advantage here in bot lane where we gotta get Kogma and Leona to back because they are pretty low. So you go ahead, push the lane, go back. Connex is gonna cover for the time being. And uh, we also got pings going down in the mid as well. Citizen's got a nice little target on him, possibly a, uh, an indication for uh, Atrocis to come by and maybe go for the taunt. Yeah, and it's interesting. Um, this top lane, you're seeing, you know, you're doing a decent job against Jax. However, Jax does have a farm advantage in that lane. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Udyr had to play passively early on, didn't want to get ganked, give up an early advantage. Right. Uh, Udyr at this point, he has nice lane sustain with the shield, obviously, but we actually have a gank onto uh, Navi Citizen here. They are chasing him down. He did get some nice burst damage. No one from his team is in range, so he's not going to get out of there. There's the ultimate from Pharrell and Lord. Should be able to pick up this kill. There it goes. One for one. Yeah, so no, so we, got, we have the gank on F earlier now we got the gank on us this and now so mid is, is slightly a little bit more even now but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's nice exchanges going for and we may see we may see more ganks from both junglers coming to mid it's like hey this is where all the action is let's stop going top let's stop going bot we're not getting anything here mids mids where the action's at so we might want to we might want to show up here a little bit more often mm-hmm 
Yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, mid and top are primarily we're, we're going to see most of the action. Bot lane, you know, alternate doesn't want to be too aggressive. They're not going to, you know, have really enough kill potential, so it's not really worth it for them, particularly with Shen, since mm. he's kind of weak as far as ganks are concerned. We could see Nautilus come Ooh, down here with yeah. the Leona combo. Um, and they, there is no ward coverage, so he is yeah. going to get in here very nicely. They know, I mean, they know the river's warded. They know that for a fact. They don't know, they did, they know the tri brush was not warded. And so we got caught next here. We got the ult coming down on Fitch, but we got the Shen ult coming out. He's trying to help save the day. We got the taunt coming in on to Cotton. We're now just trying to push them back as much as we can. Fish is just trying to get as much damage as he can, trying to catch up. We got the taunt once again. Can we actually kill the kill? Yeah, oh, we got the kill on Sand. Yes, we do. And uh, Alternate is actually taking that uh, grim situation at first. And actually turned it around for him. And we also got Citizen caught out again near the enemy turret. We got the Ziggs Bomb coming in. Will actually be enough. One more auto tech. And yes, F Ward will be able to catch that one as well. And uh, that could be a dragon. Yeah, that is going to turn into a dragon for alternate. And it's interesting, um, you know, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, Soraka and Graves, they don't have enough kill potential to take down, you know, Leona and Cog on their own. The only way it's going to happen is when Leona is really over pursuing. And you saw, uh, unfortunately, they weren't level 6 there, so kind of a mistimed gank. Uh, Leona hadn't, hadn't hit level 6 yet, that ultimate could have helped them out a lot. Um, you know, so unfortunately she does go down, that is a dragon. And now we're starting to see, so, you know, Udyr, he does have really nice regen with his shield, and he does have nice burst with his tiger stance, but he just can't stand up to the sustained damage that Jax does. And if Jax, you know, jumps on him, you get the stun, you get a couple more attacks, you proc your ultimate, yep. and you saw very quickly he's able to wear down right through the shield of Udyr and, um, just completely, you know, destroy him in that lane, and that's going to be a serious concern for them. Shen doing a nice job of keeping up, and, um, you know, obviously Shen late game is going to be very tanky. He will give them a uh, nice initiation with the Oriana ult. Uh, it's just that Nautilus is going to be tankier, and he's going to have more CC, so we'll uh, we'll have to continue seeing what's happening. Yeah, and the Oracle's right now for map control. Yep, so he recognized, we recognize right now, Connex, we realize, like, oh man, I was going in for all these ganks top lane. Udyr kept moving away, there's got to be a ward here. We got the, We got the good kills here. Oh, we didn't. We didn't get the kills here, bot lane either. So we think you know maybe he's like you know what, they've got a lot of ward coverage. We might want to go ahead and try and just just get rid of it as much as we can, just so we have better opportunities on these ganks. Because Connex, if we don't start getting the kills we need, he's going to start falling behind, and that's what he's here to do. He's here to enter lane to throw down his CC and to help get uh, help get his team get uh, get more kills. And it's not happening right now. We even see alternate now coming in. And despite the fact that we had the oracles, we actually did, we actually did not even go back clear ward. We're just going to go ahead and just go balls to the wall right in on this. We get the <laughs> we get the ult once again here down onto Graves, but we got the Shen ult. He's back in here, but Citizen is now here to help out. We got the Ziggs bomb, do as much damage as we can. Cotton's out in front. We got the stun once again onto Graves. And can we finish it off? Yes, we can. Yeah, and that's one of the concerns with Leona is the quick ultimate into the, um, you know, flash. And you don't have to use Leona's dash in order to engage with the stun always. Um, you do have that ranged ultimate, which can be very nice. Yep. Uh, Graves, unfortunately, not quite able to get out of there. His, you know, dash was down. Um, so, nice, you know, pickup. And Cog is definitely going to be very strong as the game progresses. Uh, I don't know. So, it's we have a nice gold advantage for alternate right now. The only concern is both top and bottom should be completely in Navi's favor at this point. And they just have such a strong top and bottom lane. Uh, it's going to be difficult, and then they obviously have late game. Citizen should be fine mid against uh, Oriana. Oriana's done a very nice job in that mid lane, but even so, it's almost impossible to shut down Ziggs from farming. And you do see he does have an advantage, uh, despite those kills, to onto Oriana. That plus when we get into team fights later, we're going to have Oriana get in, the, get in the thick of things. We're probably just going to throw the ball onto a deer. And once the deer gets in the middle, his team fights like, all right, I'm going to ult. Let's disperse them all. Now what? We don't have the damage. Right. And that's, that can cause quite a bit of a problem for them later on. But uh, we also see Atrocious here. He's like, oh, you got an Oracles. I should probably get one, too. You guys probably got some decent ward coverage now as well. So we got Oracles on both of our junglers here trying to make a difference and just clear all the vision from both teams. You see, now we're just going on a ward hunt here. Now we're just trying to, to just get rid of all these annoying, pesky little wooden we, totems. We should say, though, I mean, if you've noticed, 
Uh, Alternate's done a really nice job in this bottom lane, and it should be to Cog and Leona's advantage now, but even so, Graves, by constantly pushing into the tower, has had complete control over this lane for the most part. Yeah. Um, you know, he has been able to easily outfarm Cog because he's constantly pushing into the tower. The tower is very close to going down when they decide to take it. By pushing up to the tower, he knows, all right, I'm generally going to be safe from ganks as long as the river is awarded. Uh, I know that he's not going to be able to, Nautilus isn't going to be able to sneak into the bush down bot. I don't have to worry about a lane gank. Um, so, you know, by uh, constantly pushing in the tower, he has kept himself fairly safe. Yep. And even if they do, even if Navi did want to get those ganks on there, I mean, we, ha we actually brought Citizen. Oh, away but from mid, him. we have Nautilus coming in on for Ellen Lord. There's actually the ultimate, though, and Citizen is very close to going down. The ultimate misses from Oriana as Citizen flashes out of there. Now they can turn back onto him. They will back off, so no kills going down. Yep. But uh, even so, some nice aggression from both junglers. And there's a very good flash away from Citizen to escape the Oriana ult. That, yeah. that would have. That would have brought him into a significantly larger world of pain than what he took. And, you know, granted, we had Shen here for the taunt as well, but Cliff decided to come down from top lane to help out, but he just did not get here in time. We got the taunt coming in once again here at Cotton X, and then we got the flash in from Cliff. Can we actually get more CC down? We got the ult from Ziggs trying to deal some more damage. And it shows this is very close, very close, and he does fall down. We get, lose that Oracles, and there's like, oh, man, oh, we lost the Oracles on Nautilus as well, so it's a mutual loss here, and Sand is now caught out by three members of alternate here. So net gain, net gain for alternate. Both teams lost their oracles, but uh, Navi also lost one additional player, but actually it looks like uh, alternate may also lose their top tower here in just a moment. So we need to try and see if we can't take this mid. We got four members, we got every, all the remaining members of alternate here. You can see if we can't exchange a tier one for a tier one so we can still uh, end up above in black, and in the black for this last fight and we got it. Yeah, and you saw how pressed Alternate was on getting that initiation, and they're, you know, they, this is where their team is probably at the strongest at this point. Yeah. They can take advantages with that AOE that they have. Um, you know, they are fairly tanky. They have nice bursts. So this is, you know, about as good as it's going to get uh, for Alternate. Uh, so you saw Udyr with the flash in. He didn't even get the stun off on the Nautilus. He no. was just like, you know, I mean, he was trying to. He did get it uh, after a second, but it <laughs> wasn't eventually. immediate. Um, but he was just like, all right, we have to get a kill here. We have to take an advantage. Uh, he knew that they had the 4v3 advantage, so just diving hard. It actually might have been a 4v4 now that I think back. Um, I believe it was. Jax, Jax was still top. Right, but I think yeah. it, I believe it was a four v four. So you know they were able to pick up those kills, uh, you know, which is nice. But uh, we'll have to see. They did get a tower out of it. They did push mid pretty successfully. Now we see Navi with the res uh, return coming down mid as well. But they will be able to clear off this wave. Uh, they have a, they have a pretty good inkling on Dragon here as well. They got the ward coverage. And there it is. They were ready. They were prepared. They're in the pit waiting for that guy to come back. But alternate, they know. They got the ward coverage also. And we got the Ziggs Bomb just trying to dissuade them. We got the mines going down as well. You might also see the Satchel Charge just to try and uh, keep that uh, keep that lane a little bit more pressed. But they got the Dragon. Now they're going to go ahead and engage on this Geyser. Out in the back. And we get the hook. We got all the CC. And he's the first one to fall. We said the ult going down in Graves. And now the Ziggs Bomb trying to do what he can. And Cliff is extremely low. And Jax will go ahead and finish up and pick up that kill. We got the ping zone down on F40. He's trying to be the next target. But uh, Shen will not be able to get away either. Caught in X is out in front taking a turret. We will not be able to press this any further. So we got a dragon and three kills for Navi. It looks like Oriana is going to have to back out or die. Yeah, and we're, we're starting to see how strong this comp is. And a lot of it is just how unstoppable Jax has seemed to be, uh, be lately. So um, deja you know, vu, man. Right, picking up the, uh, <laughs> the triple kill. And it's just it's so difficult to stop when you have, you know, Two really I, strong carries with both Jax and Kog'Maw. He obviously Ziggs. Um, I feel like he's become really underrated for a time now because his damage output is just so strong. His yeah. zoning, uh, his you know CC is it's not you know the hardest um, you know CC like other maybe mid champions, but it's it's very strong. Uh, so I don't know. We'll have to see. It's going to be difficult for Alternate to clean up these fights because. Right now, Navi almost has better burst than them. They definitely have better sustain. So, you know, what is Alternate going to hang their hats on? And um, I don't know, they, they have pretty nice tanking capabilities. They are actually just rushing this Baron. And so uh, we know that Navi is pretty low. Most of them have to go back now. We do see Antigen is here. He's full health. Nautilus and Leona are both generally okay. So this is kind of a desperation thing. And to see it at only 17 minutes in, this huge desperation act Baron, uh, we have really no other choice. I mean, it is our best chance too. Navi, we had Jax, we also had Ziggs have to go back to buy. So they're the two big damage dealers are way back at home. This is their best shot. Sand is being caught out in the back, but you know what? Now Jax and Ziggs are here, and the Ari ult actually bringing them closer. 
a little bit of a missed time there, and Navi manages to go ahead and keep them away from Baron. One for one, but they now have the superior positional advantage. And uh, Alternate is also a little... Uh, a little bit scared now. I was like, oh man, okay, so Ziggs and Jax, they're back. They got all these shiny new items. Trinity Force, Giant's Belt, Blasting Wand, probably going to be a needlessly large rod to add on to that as well soon. We'll probably get it on to Death Cap later on. But uh, yeah, Altered seems a little bit scattered, man. And uh, I think I think they should have stuck there. They should have stuck it out, trying, you know, still DPS Baron as much as they can because they were there. They were already there. They're already taking uh, the damage. The issue is it, it was a lost fight, and they... You know, if they had st uh, stayed there to try and take out the Baron, then all of a sudden, Navi would have aced them and taken the Baron. And mm. that would have been game over. You know, they knew that it was, there was really no way for them to pull out of that um, in a positive situation. So they just tried to get out of there. They did pick up one kill into Leona. The Orianna ult, it did put Sorak into a poor position, but it got the rest of them out of there. Uh, it pulled, you know, Navi away from them, so they were able to get out of there. Um, it's just going to be extremely difficult for them right now because I, I don't, I'm not really sure... Uh, where, you know, they're going to have a strength over Navi in these fights. And I think they probably are thinking the same thing right now. Just how strong Navi's team is. Um, they can push right up to these towers. They have the range uh, from Cog where they can just start taking down the towers. And actually, Jax coming onto Soraka. There's the Ignite and then the ultimate from Ziggs. They're going to be able to drop him quickly. Coming onto Shen as well. Oh, he is just it. absolutely unstoppable. They have no answer for him right now. Oh, the now hook on the Frelin Lord. Fortunately, he gets out of there, but there's the ultimate, and then Jax coming in once again. He is just so powerful. Graves probably going to grab Ziggs, but even so, this is a lost fight. We got Nautilus here. He's trying to get away, and Udyr is doing everything in his power to try and keep him from leaving. We do have the Graves kill also, but it uh, looks like Cliff will not be able to DPS Kog'Maw down, and it looks like we just may have the ace here in their own base, not even with a Baron. Can we get the last few hits we need? Kog's tanking that tower. Now Udyr will be able to go back to the fountain, but uh, yeah, this inhibitor is going to be going down. Navi's, they're very low at this point. They might be able to just you know go ahead and back off, go back to town, get their health back. So this, we have, if Alternate decides to, they have one last chance to try and sneak Baron because we have so many members of Navi go into back. Nautilus did die in that uh, exchange as well. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really seem all too likely. We have the mid wave pushing. They're, they're gonna have no choice but to defend. If they if if they just if they left, they had to have left like maybe like ten like as soon as everyone came back. If they really wanted to go for Baron, they've had to left after well, immediately spawning. But what they would scattered. have needed to do is have Shen or someone uh, just chase after them, and they were all very low. And Shen wouldn't want to fight them, obviously, because yeah. uh, obviously because he would die. And you know, there's no uh, good situation. But what he would need to do is constantly kind of chase after them while they're trying to recall and bait them to keep on stopping their recall until the rest of his team is up. Um, you do see that occasionally where you try and you know force the team to not be able to recall. But uh, it's just so difficult at this point. You know, alternate they knows uh, they know that they knows. Wow, they know they know that they knows um, this yeah this <laughs> this fight is is just going to be so difficult for them. I'm not really sure you know what they their thoughts were with the uh the shen and the udir pick um you know i recognize they they wanted the udir to you know do well against jackson he didn't really lose the lane to Jax, but obviously Jax farmed exceedingly well i mean he didn't die at all but yeah. um you know Jax did free farm for the most part so that was a concern and the shen pick yes it works well with uh oriana they just don't really have the follow-up damage so um i don't know you know I think this is probably a lost game, but uh, we'll see what alternate can kind of do. They do have really nice clearing capabilities, so they can stall out for quite some time. Try and get that magical fight that they want, you know, just that w one in a you know, thousand chance or whatever, yep. um, and see if they can pick off uh, Navi. But if, if they do, if they manage to catch a member of Navi off guard, though, I mean, they definitely have enough CC right. with themselves to keep them still and to kill them. And we got the Udyr stun, we got the Shen taunt, and if we need it, we also have the Ori ult as well. So if we can catch someone, we could be able to snag that kill relatively quickly. But uh, I, mean, I think at this point, though, I mean, the, the advantage right here in Navi positionally, they have so many towers down, they got mid and hib down. You know, they can just go ahead and and they also have superior zoning and pressure. We have the mm -hmm. Kog'Maw, we have the Ziggs, we can just keep on throwing bombs and spitting into their base all day until they just get so low to the point where they can just overrun them. And we got another creep wave coming down here, so we'll see what they do with this as well. And we're gonna just, just straight out dive like we did last time too. But we got Cliff, he's out in front trying to take as much damage as we can. And all the while, we just see Kog and Ziggs just 
poke away at that tower. And th this next wave, it should go down. Yeah, they have such strong poking capabilities, they can slowly wear down the tower. But then, you know, when we're done with the poke, if Alternate decides, oh, we have to stop this, we have to protect the tower, then all of a sudden they have to deal with Leona and Nautilus and Jax. And, you know, they're uh, the front line, you know, just monsters. They can just easily win these fights. Jax with that uh, Warmox. And actually, we do have the engage here. And very quickly, they are able to pick up Citizen. So that's a huge victory for them. Unfortunately, Jax is going to run rampant now. He is jumping onto Frelin Lord, Picks up that one kill. Kogma grabbing Udyr in the back line. And Shen coming over here to try and shut down Jax. They are very close to picking up the kill, but he just jumps out of there. He still has like 1,500 HP. So it's kind of deceptive. Um, you know, so it was an even exchange for the two teams. Unfortunately, we do have Kogma still up. Uh, and he is just going to be, ex be extremely strong still. And we do have Jax, though he is low. Nautilus can protect for Kog'Maw a little bit um, while he can, you know, pressure this top lane. See, that's what we needed to do. We, we saw that, we recognized that Ziggs, he was a little bit too far out in front. He was in the slow field of Orion. It's like, hey, we got a Ziggs. Ult, let's pull him in. Let's focus him down because he's one of the major damage dealers for the team. But they still have Jax. They still have Cog to worry about, and they just were not able to, to, to follow up with the rest of that damage. Tower did go down, Jax was just straight out focusing it. And with the tower going down, that also goes a lot of alternates damage with it as well, because they would just, you know, full you know, transition to a full out dive if they wanted to keep continuing the fight. And the turret would have done a good bulk of it, but it did go down and now we got a three, now four okay, now everyone from Navi is here. We actually got the pull here onto Atrocis. We got the minefield. We're going to get the slows. We're just going to go ahead and just force him out while the rest of Navi is going to go ahead and finish this Baron. Jax does have to back. He is very low, but we can't actually get the stun here on Oriana. Will Jax be able to get the safety? I do not want to see him lose the Baron buff, but he does. Jax is a little bit too low. He stuck around for a little bit too long, but now we got Cliff trying to focus down here on Kogma. We also got the Nautilus pull here onto F Ward, trying to keep him back. Can we actually get a kill onto something? We got Donaldus, he's very low, and actually <laughs> Graves is able to finish him off with the ult, but we do have Cliff here now trying to run away from pretty much all the remaining members of Na'Vi, but he will go ahead and reunite with his teammates. Two members of Na'Vi, they grab Baron, and, and Nautilus and Jax are now down. Yeah, and a lot of that just has to do with the fact that they were so low to begin with. Yeah. Um, you know, that was about as you know, good of a fight as you can imagine for alternate, you know, because Kogma was very low on mana, couldn't really spam out his abilities or have that long range damage that you would like. Um, you know, Jax obviously very low, they're able to burst him down. Now that we have the uh, Baron buff on both uh, Kogma and Ziggs, their damage and sustain is just going to be so strong. And once Jax comes back, uh, we do see he's building a second yes, Warmog. I, so yeah. that Darien, uh, the, that Darien Jax build, the Mundo, the Mundo Jax. Yeah. <laughs> so he, you know, he's just going to be so difficult to deal with at this point. There's just there's no way you can burst down, you know, a Jax when you have two Warmogs. Yeah. Um, you have to just have sustain damage, and that's one thing that they really lack. They have Graves, uh, which is very nice for sustain, but. Obviously, you know, if Jax just jumps on Graves, then all of a sudden uh, it's not working. And Jax, yeah. you know, does work as a physical counter. So um, I don't know. It's just going to be extremely difficult for Alternate to, you know, win any further fights. We do see Navi picking up this dragon. Uh, they can transition to mid. They have two open inhibitors that they can take. And I'm not sure that I see Alternate being able to defend it. Yeah, provided we did kill Nautilus, we did kill Jax, we got Baron buff off one of the major damage dealers for Navi, but we still got Ziggs, we still got Kogma, and you know they're the they're the pokers. They're the one in the back throwing all of the crap into the base to try and just get their health low as low as possible. And you know they're going to have that extra damage available to them now. But we actually see Udyr now just going straight in onto Sand. We got another full engage. This may actually be the last stand we have here. And we got Nautilus out in front. We're trying to focus down Udyr, but we got the Orianna ult getting three members of Navi, and Leona is actually the first one to go down. We got the Ziggs bomb now trying to deal as much damage as we can. We got Jax, we got the stun ready and up. We were leaping straight to Orianna, and we got the taunt, and the towers will actually take him out despite his health. And uh, now we got an uh, inhibitor, which we can just go ahead and take for free. We can go ahead and take top inhibitor as well, because we got Shen, we got Graves, and we got Soraka. Graves, he's not, he can only do so much damage, and he needs the help of his teammates in order to, to shut them down. We need a Shen taunt on someone for Graves to maximize his damage. We need to keep him still. And Ziggs is providing enough pressure here and enough poke to provide them a free escape. Yeah, and it's actually really nice. We've seen, you know, multiple fights in a row now, alternate with really nice control over the fights. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, by all means, they are extremely, you know, far behind in this game. And um, yeah. Jax was very strong, but obviously diving into the turrets, he did go down. 
Um, so, I, you know, it's it's just difficult because they can't get into that back line. And a lot of it has to do with that sustain that Soraka gives them. Um, they are able to, you know, just slowly wait until someone's out of position on Navi and then pounce on them. Yep. And that's kind of what they're looking to do is just, you know, jump on someone who's out of position. Uh, but unfortunately, Kogma has enough range. It's going to be Im almost impossible for them to ever get Kogma. Yeah. <laughs> Ziggs has enough range. It's going to be you know very difficult to grab him. They did get him the one time, uh, but I'm not sure that he'll let that happen again. So it's, it really comes down to they're only going to be able to grab uh, Leona, Nautilus, or Jax. And all three of them are incredibly tanky. You know, It's just such an astounding effort to take them down when they have so much health and armor and MR. And we see they are turning back on them now. Uh, going to try and get a hard engage because we do have a 4v3 advantage. Leona not going to jump in on them, actually. Uh, but we'll see. We actually have the pull on Shen, And so this is going to set up a nice fight for them. We do have the uh, damage from Ziggs and from Kogwa. Great damage. Able to pick him up very quickly. Kog is a little bit out of position, though. Takes some damage. But now they can turn back on him. We have the ultimate on Darfrell and Lord. Uh, actually cancelled. So... Um, I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, well, there it goes. <laughs> and actually, Jax coming in on the back line. They will take him down. They will take down Udyr as well. And now Jax in pursuit of Graves. He does have that slow with that Triforce. And they do have this uh, fight won. So we'll see whether or not they just come onto the Nexus now. I looks like Jax is just going to, like, you know what? You, know, you guys can go ahead and take care of all the extra collateral, collateral work. I know where I'm going, straight for the Nexus Towers, because we only got Graves and Soraka here to defend this, and you know, Graves can only do so much damage to Jax right now, and Navi can go ahead and take the rest of the objectives they need. They're going to have so many minions pushing in on the, both these towers. This should be a GG any second, but that last fight, they went straight towards the back lines, like, okay, we could... We could focus any of these other members of Ultra, but you know what, Shen, he's on the back line. He's going to be providing a lot of utility. We take him down, they have no huge shield, they have no taunt, and it's going to be a lot easier for us to go ahead and pick up the rest of the members. And they, they made their decision, and it was a wise choice. They won that fight and won themselves game one. So game one, going to Na'Vi.